Hey, what's going on, guys? Andy Pride here, back with Milk and Cookies Total War, and I am with my good friend Robin Hood. Please introduce hey. yourself. Hey there, guys. And today we are going to be bringing you a really kind of stupid 2v2 replay that we played a while ago. It was probably one of the most unique army setups I've ever <laughs> used in a Shogun battle. It was pretty ridiculous. We basically both spammed, completely spammed, matchlock units in a vanilla Shogun 2 battle and fire bomb throwers and each had a fire rocket. And you want to go over your army setup real quick? Sure. Um, so up front I have a matchlock Ashigaru. Matchlock Samurai, a Heavy Gunner, and a Matchlock Warrior Monk. Then, uh, total I have seven Firebomb Throwers split, spread out, not split out, through the middle there. A Fire Rocket, uh, another Matchlock Samurai and Ashigaru in the back, a Yari Samurai, and obviously my General, and make that three Yari Samurai for either flank. And then now I'm over at your army, so you can go ahead. I had a couple of Yari Ashigaru, a Tokitada's Tanagashima hero matchlock unit, a couple of matchlock samurai, matchlock warrior monk, four firebomb throwers, and then a couple of Yari samurai in the back. And honestly, when we played this battle, I was completely taken aback about how effective this army setup can actually be. Obviously, if your opponents bring just tons of cavalry, you're going to have issues. But yeah. I think that, I mean, honestly, like, weren't you surprised when we played this? Because, like, fire rockets yeah. are like, fire rockets are good now. And then all these matchlocks, if you kite effectively and manage to just, like, keep pulling back, you can actually do a ton of damage with this kind of army setup as well. Yeah, and just to quickly explain the theory behind this, well, not behind this army, how we came to using this, uh, we were, if he, those of you watching this on my channel, you know my uh, subscriber army series, we were going to do this in kind of a co-op setting so we could get through more armies across the different channel as well. And uh, to prove that we were qualified to actually you know, use other people's armies and try to analyze them. We were going to try to win with an army that we personally thought was crap. And uh, this battle may possibly prove that wrong. I think it probably did. <laughs> it probably <laughs> did. Okay, so are you ready to go or anything else to say? Uh, I think I am ready to go, sir. So let's get into this. Three, two, one, press play. There we and, go. And uh, I do apologize. I do not have my Turtle Beach microphone with me, so I'm using just my regular built-in computer mic. So any audio issues might be caused by that. So just apologize in advance. But yeah. Oh, and quick side note. Thank you to my uh, friend Chris Chris Eb, who in a ton of my videos always ends up on the other side. He joins when we don't have someone to face and generally does not get the best uh, luck of the draw there with his allies. But thank you again to him for joining in this battle. We He's, thank him very much because he had yeah. to deal with a lot with Augustus. <laughs> Augustus, no offense to him, but he was a newer player and didn't really know what to do against an army setup which, which like probably this. And, you know what us. i don't i don't blame him because you don't run into these kind of army setups every day yeah definitely honestly like the firebomb throwers are probably except maybe hand mortars the worst unit in this game so having them as even like a partial core of your army setup is generally not a good idea but obviously we have we have the range advantage in this one. We got the <laughs> yeah. fire rockets, 250, no, 300 range on the fire rockets, and then all the matchlock units. So running into this kind of army setup from the front is not a good idea. You definitely want to get on the flank and try to maybe double team your opponents, which they do try to double team you in this one, don't they? Yeah, and uh, I mean, also, though, the thing with the flank is since we have so many guns, we can really extend our lines as well. Yeah, uh, If you look like at my side, it's, kind of it's yeah, kind of difficult to get on the flank there, especially my opponent who, what, I believe this guy brought a ton of hero units. Yeah, we've got a Tetsubo Warrior Monk Hero, Naginata Monk Hero, another uh, Tadakatsu's Tetsubo Monks, I believe that's how it's pronounced, and Saigon Swords Master. So that helps. They they heroes die just as quickly, and it looks they like they your die, fire they rockets. They die quicker, and that's yeah. the that's the, the biggest issue Augustus had is wow. I mean, you don't want to bring warrior nuns, and I obviously didn't know what kind of army setup we were bringing. But heroes and warrior nuns, they both have many less men per unit, and match talks kill them just as quickly. It doesn't matter their armor values at all; they'll die just as easily to gunfire. So, what big you guys trouble just saw him. there was. Uh, Indy Pride's fire rockets opening up the battle there. But that's got to be at least 30 guys. Well, maybe not that many. Well, let me, I'll look, see how many kills they got. Where are they? Where oh, are yeah, they? you can look at that. 70, 70, they got 70, 70. Kills in one volley. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I did not account for the men flung way over the field. I was just looking right at the. 
uh, points of impact there. Chris Evans being smart though, he's setting up behind that ridge so my fire rockets don't have a great firing angle. But I mean, CA has done a lot for fire rockets. I remember when they, the fire rockets were first in the game, they were very good, very accurate. Then they got patched and they weren't very accurate anymore and really couldn't kill very many guys. But I don't know which patch it was. It was maybe two or three patches ago. They kind of rebuffed the fire rockets, gave them a lot of accuracy. And I wouldn't say fire rockets are overpowered. You can still deal with them very easily and they're extremely expensive. Expensive, but yeah. They can do a lot of damage. Yes, lot of they damage. can. What? Because that's 70 kills in one volley there oh, if you get a look, good volley. Look at how grouped up Augustus was right there. Oh, Just yeah. Oh. How many men brutal. did mine get? Where are they? 41 in that one, so not quite as effective, but still nothing to uh, shy away at. And there just goes more. I think I got his general. I, I think you're sniping his general because you're a yeah. terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> his general's down to 11. And uh, obviously the combat is opening up over here, and I'm starting to wrap around on the flanks. Oh. Look at that volley. What is that, my heavy gunners? Yep. <laughs> that just shredded everybody. Oh my god. <laughs> we only got 21 kills, but you saw this. It, it, it just threw people everywhere. Yeah. And this is not what you want to do. You do not want to run straight into an army like this. You look at all this fire coming in. The morale penalty from this many Matchhawk shooting is going to route units Look so at that quickly. unit just got shredded, those warrior nuns. <laughs> Firebomb throwers are going off now. Yeah, they are. Oh, wow. So, uh, this, this, I'm going to apologize now. It is our fault that the screens are shaking so much. Uh, that's just the game for you. And we had to deal with it while microing all this stuff as well. I mean, because this is, in fact, a pretty micro-intensive army. Oh, absolutely. You have to kite, like, you have to kite a lot with this kind of army. I mean, Augustus kind of grouped up, and he made it easier for you, but, like, yeah. you still need to kite, because obviously you don't want your match locks caught. And once he gets into melee, obviously it's going to start turning around in his favor. Yeah, see, right now I'm tying up uh, on the right a bunch of his troops and starting to surround them with match locks, but I sent in my Yari Samurai to tie them up. And look at those fire bombs oh going out from the back. There's so many explosions going off right now. And the only thing is pretty much gone. that is starting to uh, affect me is Chris coming in, and that's why Indy is here to back me up. Got a couple matchups over on the right flank, but Chris was trying to flank his great guard over around my left, and so I had a bunch of Yari Samurai and some matchlocks turning to face that. But now I noticed that Chris was trying to double Robin Hood, and so I'm gonna send all my units over there and start helping his left flank out a little bit. Yeah. Because Chris Hebb does have an army that's pretty decent for countering this. He has some high level katanas and some cav. If those great guard get around behind us, they can cause a lot of issues for us. Wow. See, this is the first time I've looked at this replay up close, and the carnage is just terrifying. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you do not have time to zoom in when uh, dealing with this live. We really ought to do something where we actually use this army live. That'll be funny. Let's see. So what What are your fire rockets firing at? And they're warrior, monk. warrior monks in the back there. That was a good volley. Got 20 men in that one. Yeah. It's not bad. That's an expensive unit. Definitely want to target something like that. And your fire rockets are going into Chris Hub's no Nodachi. Oh my god. Oh wow, yeah, that was a 30. killer volley. Yeah, my my fire rockets are only at 100 kills though. What are yours at? Where are they? Mine have 160. 160. And they're about to get another volley off. Another really good volley off. <laughs> fire rockets are so much fun to use, guys. I don't... I don't recommend that you use them in like match made settings because people will really hate you and if you're gen sniping with them it's kind of a mean thing to do but they're so much fun to use yeah when you is off the same field, man. yeah Augustus is gone uh, I'm just dealing with a I actually let one of my match lock Ashigaru take a hit to just wrap up that katana samurai and on the right flank, his men are just getting massacred. Honestly, Chris Ebb shouldn't have gone for you. I don't. I'm not sure why he did that because I know he. I know he wanted to double team you, but he exposed himself to my fire for so much longer than he needed to. If he just run at me and used his cabin, just focused on my side, yeah. he would have had a much better chance because like he allowed like three or four more fire rocket volleys to go off by going for you instead because you were further away. 
So it maybe wasn't the best strategy to go for me or go for you past my, all my match locks. But oh, what happened? I was just zoomed in on a guy and he got hit directly. Oh, he's still alive. This guy is getting bombed like crazy. <laughs> How did he survive that? Firebomb throws are really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now all combat on my side of the field is pretty much over. Oh, except for this. Uh, the story behind this, I was getting Skype messages right now saying that Nico will die. Uh, so you'll notice this great guard is just chasing my general. And at this point, uh, Indy's got enough troops. I'm throwing everything just to make sure I don't give uh, Chris, since he is my friend, the satisfaction of killing my general. So you'll notice like these matchlocks just going in kind of suicide here and Nico running away. And uh, besides that, you're wrapping up the rest of the battle on the left here. And those poor great guard, I mean, they're just such, such an expensive unit, and they're so good, but when there are this many matchlock units <laughs> shooting in at them. Yeah. Do you end up getting away, or does he kill you? Uh, I get away. He's never killed Nico. That's why he went after him. In <laughs> Wait, like the ever, he's never killed him in any No, he no. He, he hit him once with great guard and somehow, like a full great guard unit, and somehow Nico, not even being a melee general, won. Uh, it's just some kind of curse on Chris. And so he, he said before he dies, he will kill him someday. Um, I'm going to try to make sure that never happens. But we're bound to fight him again, so who knows. And if it does, I'm obliged to show it since uh, Chris has been kind enough to be on the other team against me when I'm communicating with people so many times. So, yeah, you guys will know if, if he ever kills Nico, but you can see he's fine. He's running over here back into Indy's lines. Has he ever beaten you before? Uh, he's beaten every single person besides you that I play with, but he's never beaten me in a 1v1 killed or killed my general, and uh, he's never beaten me in a 2v2. So, And a lot of times in those 2v2s, I don't even fight him. So, I mean, it's just he's really unlucky against me for some reason. Yeah, he's a good player. He sure. is, yeah. God, look at that. Uh, do you have dead bodies still on your computer? It was no, but it, yeah, it I is. Have it on low settings, but I when, know we killed. When a you lot see this, wow, it is just fields of, and it looks really cool because rather than being the normal melee fight, just kind of uh, jumbled up mess, they're just spread everywhere, especially from the fire rockets. Do you want to go over the stats real quick? Yeah, I'm I'm in the loading screen. I was looking around the field for a second. Yeah, my life's faster than yours, so we'll just wait. Till yeah, that's done. that's called Fraps and DirectX 11. Yeah, well, and the fact that I'm I'm on low settings, so it loads super fast for everything. It just looks terrible. Yeah, well, sometimes when I play live, I actually go to that just for the load times. Because, yeah. uh, like, you know, in all games, my, my computer loads everything super fast. But for some reason, Shogun, the higher the settings you play on, even if you have an awesome PC, it just takes forever. Yeah. Okay, I'm at the stats now. You got a hell of a lot more kills than I did. <laughs> that was because they because double teamed me, though. Yeah. yeah. I also lost somehow perfect a thousand. That wow, that is almost all of my army. <laughs> That's 320 men left. My fire rockets had 180 kills. I had a match like with 136. That's pretty decent stats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your fire rockets only losing six there. My best unit was my uh, my matchlock warrior monk. 175. That's a lot of kills. That matchlock Ashigaru also did very well, surprisingly. So Let's what would you want to do if you if you saw if you ran into an army like that? I mean, obviously it's kind of a troll, troll kind of army. But if you did run into something like that, how would you how would you counter that? Well, um. If it was grassy flatlands, I'd just submit defeat in the sense that i just <laughs> right. charge. But otherwise, yeah. uh, you really, if you have 200 range bows, I'd say they're going to be your best weapon. And the fire rockets, they're, they're dangerous, but in a sense, uh, I still feel like if you could find a forest behind a hill, you know, that's pretty much your best option. Just stay hidden and make them come discover you. Yeah, I would just say terrain. Terrain. Would be, terrain would be your absolute best bet. Like, and a, don't a lot of waste your cavalry. Do yeah. not waste your cavalry. Yeah, a lot of people for some reason don't think to zoom down and look at the terrain and see whether their matchlocks or their guns have line of sight. 
And that's obviously a huge mistake, especially if you bring... I mean, this is more relevant to Fall of Samurai when people actually bring all gun armies, but if you can use, you can use that to your advantage, especially if you're rushing, just make sure, zoom down, look at the train, make sure that they don't have line of sight, and if you can position yourself in a place where they're not going to be at the maximum range away from you on a flat part of the map, you can kind of force the engagement in a place where they don't have great line of sight for all their match locks. And that's a great way to just get into a melee engagement without losing a ton of guys. Yeah, and I've had battles where, you know, I've sat there and hidden the trees while they just shelled me with artillery. And yes, you're taking some losses, but in the end, uh, their artillery wasn't as effective, you know, as it could have been. And then y you still have the advantage because they just lost an expensive unit yeah. in that sense. Chris actually got a lot of kills there now that I look at it. And my my poor opponent, he just got slaughtered. He just did not have the yeah, kind of army set up to deal with it. <laughs> I guess he, since he was new, he wanted to try all those DLC units and ran and into us. So, him. Augustus, if you do manage to see this on either Indie or Eyes channel, uh, I am really, truly sorry. We're and sorry. I hope that you did not stop playing the game due to <laughs> this. <laughs> Make the Caesars proud and continue. I unless you're after some other Augustus, which I don't. At that point, I don't know what to say. So have fun. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that battle. Uh, we're yep. probably gonna record a couple more games here, and they might go up on our channel. So I guess I will talk to you later. Yep. And if you're watching this on my channel, I've done a shout out before, but why not again? Go over to Indie, especially right now since. Uh, their channel is posting a lot more multiplayer footage than I am able to with my schedule right now. So as of right now, I'd say that is the place to go. And, and if you are on my channel, uh, Robin Hood's channel will be linked in the description. So if you're not subbed to him, please go sub to him. And I guess we will talk to you later. Yep. Thank you guys for watching. See you.